Hi there again. Welcome back to Nano. I'm going to try and make another virtual reality video, so bear in mind if the quality is quite crappy, I'm still learning here. So, let's pull up the Serotonin 2A Crystal Structure with LSD bound. Uh, in the Crystal Structure paper, there are some important interactions with LSD and the Serotonin 2A receptor. So, uh, the few of them that are important are serine 242, right here. There's actually a hydrogen bond that forms between LSD and serine 242. There's additionally a salt bridge that occurs between this positively charged amine group and the negative charge on aspartic acid. Additionally, in the same paper, they also talk about this leucine-229 lid that keeps LSD stably inside of the receptor. And the idea here is that we can try and turn it a little bit to show you how this works. So let's turn it so that we can see the leucine-229 like that. Just make sure. So what happens here is because leucine is a hydrophobic amino acid and LSD has lots of hydrophobic hydrocarbons, there is interactions called hydrophobic interaction between leucine-229 and LSD that holds it stably inside the receptor. Okay, so what happens is in this paper, uh, from 2017 by um, Wacker and Roth is that they mutate this leucine-229 to an alanine. And when they do that, they see that the drug LSD escapes from the receptor about four times as fast when you mutate that to alanine. So it's really a hypothesis for idea that this whole extracellular loop 2 acts like a lid, trapping LSD inside of the receptor. And if you change the mechanism of that lid by changing leucine-229 to an alanine, the um, drug can escape a lot quicker and the lid mechanism doesn't work as well. So it's really this extracellular loop 2 lid that keeps um, LSD inside the receptor, which has to do with its long mechanism of action. Okay, an LSD trip laps, lasts about 8 to 10 hours, maybe 12 hours, but that's one of the reasons. Something cool that they also do in this paper, what they try and prove is that LSD's diethylamide moiety, okay, located right here, has to be in this exact conformation in order for LSD to be such a potent drug. How they do that is quite fascinating. I think it's genius, actually. So David Nichols, being the expert organic chemist he is, realized there's a way to prove that these diethyl amide groups have to be in the exact conformation they are inside the crystal structure to have their potency and efficacy. He creates this compound. This is called SSAZ. The reason it's called SS is because there's a, there's a chiral center right here, meaning that you could have an R or an S enantiomer. You can also, over here, have a chiral center having an R or an S enantiomer. And thus you can make this compound, which is called SSAZ. And you can also make this compound, called RRAZ. To look at how these compounds are different, let's just kind of stack them on top of each other. Okay, let's stack these two on top of each other. And when we get them exactly in the right conformation, we see something interesting. Notice how at the position where there's a chiral center right here, one of the methyl groups is going to my left, one of the methyl groups is going to my right. And the same up here, one of the methyls is going to my left, one is going to my right. These are the two different enantiomers that can lock basically these methyl groups groups into place using this um this square like structure which is really rigid okay 
So here's how he proves this. If we dock these compounds to the serotonin 2A crystal structure, here's what we would see in, ter in terms of how they dock. Okay, once again, we're looking back at LSD docked inside the crystal structure. And what we're going to do is dock those RR and SSAZ um, enantiomers to see which one looks like LSD. Okay. So, the first one is the SS enantiomer. This is really interesting. So, let's notice something here. If we look at the chiral centers, we can see this is the SS enantiomer. And notice how the methyl group perfectly tracks with LSD's diethylamide group. And conversely, notice how the methyl group here tracks perfectly with LSD's diethylamide group or the methyl coming off at this bottom carbon. Because this docks very similarly to LSD, it actually has basically the same activity at serotonin 2A receptor if you were to look at the paper. So that's really cool that you can use this cool chemistry to prove that. However, the other enantiomer docks quite bad. This is going to be the RR enantiomer. Okay, notice how we've got our compound inside the receptor along with LSD in purple and it doesn't track exactly like LSD. And thus the activity of this uh, compound is much weaker at serotonin 2A receptor. I thought this was a really cool proof. The other compounds, so what this really tries to show is that the conformation of the diethylamide groups have to be in this exact conformation in order for LSD to have its potency and efficacy that it does, which is quite potent at serotonin receptor. So he also builds, you guys may have heard of this other compound, LSA. Uh, this is from Hawaiian Baby Woodrow Seeds. I know this compound has been used recreationally, but it does not produce a similar trip to LSD. Notice how it lacks the diethylamide group right here. Because it lacks that group, it does not produce the potency and efficacy of LSD. And it's actually much weaker than the RRAZ derivative. So I thought that was quite genius. Um, I hope this video was uh, informative. And once again, I'm still getting used to the virtual reality setup. And I'll keep making content with this stuff. Uh, till then, stay curious.